I mean, I've never been there. It's, can I skip it or do I need to go? No, you got to go. You got to go. What's going on there other than maple syrup, of course? A small state, 640,000 people. I'm in the metro area of 125,000. Got a beautiful lake, sixth largest in the country. And uh, mountains for skiing. It's just kick ass. Right now, springtime, we're just uh, finishing up sugaring season. So we've been taking the sap out of the trees and making some kick ass maple syrup and maple cream and oh all good stuff man so is there a material difference between maple syrup that's coming out of that tree and the garbage that i get at like the normal pancake house i would imagine oh that is corn syrup versus the real deal pretty much right that's it yeah that's it basically you take 40 gallons of sap that comes out of the tree you boil that down you get one gallon of syrup it's concentrated pure sugar from the tree nothing like it ping me your address i'll send you some <laughs> I, dude, I love, you know, it's amazing that when you go to like a good breakfast place, yeah, that they serve the crappy, maybe like they'll, you'll spend a bunch of money on waffles or pancakes like that, pecans and all kinds of fancy stuff. Sure. And they serve it with this dreck, which is bizarre to me. And then when you ask for real maple syrup, most of the time they don't have it. And then if they do, they bring out this little tiny jar, like they're this big. Yeah. Like, I never understood that because it's such an integral part of the pancake experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, not everybody likes it. You, you get that corn syrup crap and uh, not everybody goes for the real deal. Benjamin Franklin wanted to make maple sugar, the sugar of the world. Uh, but obviously we know where that went. <laughs> but, uh, and there's an IHOP when it came into the area. Here, there's only one IHOP in Vermont. And when they came in, there's a huge deal. You're not opening unless you offer real Vermont maple syrup. <laughs> As it and should so, and it's the only one. So, I but no, it's. I mean, it's. This is a kick-ass place. It's a college town here, man. You would love it. You know, I should fly here sometime and uh, and check it out. I mean, it's the land of beer. Now we produce more beer, uh, more revenue and gross sales than beer than we do maple syrup. I would never have. And it's great for outdoorsy stuff. We we like to bike and hike, and it's it's great oh. outdoors. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you want to go fat biking or mountain biking or you know, any of that stuff, hiking. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And the fall is the greatest, but you got to start making plans now because it, it just it fills up. Not a bad idea. Foliage. We usually take yeah. a month or two and we go to a different – last year we went to Park City, which was pretty great for like a month, Airbnb. Nice. So maybe that. So, Jason, how can I help you, man? What do you need help with? Yeah, so – At the top of the list. Yeah, so like I'm all over the place, right? So um, you kind of resonated with me uh, from what I heard. You know, I, I tend to have a little bit of humor sometimes, and sometimes it's funny. It's unintentional. I don't realize that I'm being funny, but people just laugh. Uh, I always do better in front of people, person to person. Um, and so the challenge that I'm having now is I've never done retainer sales before. This is a new space for me. I'm sorry, retainer sales? Yes, retainer sales. What is that? I've never heard that term before. Yeah. So basically what I'm doing, instead of selling a product or like a service, I'm selling a retainer. So our clients pay us a monthly fee of, you know, $1,500, $6,000 a month. But for, that's not what you're selling, Jason. That's, uh, not what you're, that's not what you're selling. That's not what people buy. Like I don't no. buy braces. What do I buy? You buy you. No. <laughs> when I buy braces, what do I buy? Straight teeth. Smile, so I could attract hotter people if I'm single. So sure. when, I, when I ask you what, what you're selling and you said retainer services, the reason I'm asking you that question is because that's not really what you're selling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I guess the structure of the sale is different. It's a, it's a much more uh, intensive process. So the sales process is much longer. The sales, longer sales cycle, I guess, is where I'm going with that. That's what I was yeah. So, um, which I'm not used to, right? I'm used to one, two, three phone calls. There's a sale and I'm on to the next deal. You're used right. to more transactional, lower price point products. It's a, a yeah. bigger price point product, longer commitment, longer sales cycle. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. what I've been doing is you're familiar with inbound marketing probably, right? I'm familiar with it. HubSpot. So we're HubSpot agency, right? So what I've been doing is going into taking a look under the hood. So I, I found some real facts and data that I could bring to somebody saying, hey, to look at your website, here's some things that you guys can win. So they have actual data on bringing them real value. And I always thought that that was the best way in the door. What I've been learning lately is that may not be so because some of the people that I'm talking to may not be marketers, so they may not care. 
And the reality is they're going to care about trigger points that are currently on their mind. Like it could be some slander about the company in the industry right now. And how are we going to do damage control and, and you know, whatever that is. So what I've discovered is um, it's the trigger points is how I need to open up the conversations. And then the trigger points, and I'm looking at trigger points is like a ring of keys. Maybe there's six different trigger points. So I got to find the right key that's going to open that door. Once I'm in the room, now I can start saying, hey, this is how I can help you. And I can start my spiel of I've done the research and blah, blah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So one of the things that uh, people do that's a huge mistake is figuring out what the keys are because you don't have to figure that out, nor can you figure that out because you're not the person you're selling to, right? You've probably never done that. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever done the job of the person you're selling to specifically? Um, like, have you ever done their job? Sometimes. So typically I'm selling to marketers. So that's where my experience has been is in the, out of the field of marketing. So, but the people have, specifically buying your thing, have you ever bought your thing before as a marketer? I've never purchased the inbound. No. Yeah. So no. that's the disconnect, right? We have is that there's a disconnect between why we think people will care about our message and the lingo and language that the customer actually thinks about on a daily basis. And because of that disconnect, there are typically lower response rates than there have to be. And so rather than you making stuff up, Mm -hmm. Tip number one the foundation of the strategy is to not making it up at all is to mm -hmm. actually get the language from the customer. So let me show you what I mean by that. Sure. I'm going to go on a, on a website right now. Uh, sure. I used to work for called Basecamp. You know, Basecamp sells project, sure. manage, project management software. Yep. But if you go on the site, you'll notice a couple things. How was, I, how was I supposed to know? I'm buried under email. My hair is on fire. There's stuff everywhere. This language is not marketing language. If marketing wrote this website, it would say something like, we help you manage projects and save time and money. But because we have a process by which we're able to get the actual lingo from the customer, you actually start to see stuff like this. Um, stuff boils down to stuff scattered in too many places, email threads, chats, word docs, etc. This is stuff that customers have voiced Mm -hmm. And that we actually take and use in our marketing and sales messages. Now, mm -hmm. I've never looked at your website before, and I've never looked at your profile before. But let's mm -hmm. actually take a look at your website and your LinkedIn profile to see if it sounds like this. Meaning, this is how a prospective small business owner, this is their language that we're actually using. The mm -hmm. advantage of this is I don't have to think about it as a prospect. As James Collier, a famous copywriter, said, you're joining the conversation in their head. Mm. So they don't have to translate anything. When you mm -hmm. don't do that and you're talking in more generic terms and you're trying to make stuff up and trying to find keys, you're not going to be able to use their language and there's going to be this filter that people have to go through. Like, what is he talking about? And then they're going to be out. So what's your, what's your website? Ampedpipeline.com. A-M. P-E-D. Pipeline. Pipeline.com. Let's see. Yeah. Grow your advanced manufacturing business with high performance B2B marketing. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This yep. is what I call generic. And, and the reason I'm doing this is because this is sure. a, it's a tell that the foundational pieces haven't been put in place. And so we're making up these jargony buzzwords that nobody really knows what a high performance B2B marketing thing is. That's certainly probably not what people are thinking of when they're trying to do their job on a daily basis that you're selling to. They're probably not thinking, how do I get my high performance B2B marketing done? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a job done at work, right? So I have a barbecue and the job that that barbecue has to get done is it cooks me salmon at night for my wife and I. It's not a four, I'm not trying to do a 400 BTU charcoal grill, griller with things on the side like you have. Now let's actually look at your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So here's your LinkedIn profile. Let's actually do that. Yep. Uh, oh, there it was. Did I just see, did I pass you? What well, I, I just, it's funny. You, I just, how'd you up there before? Let me see. Um, okay, let's see. Well, I just had you. Uh, what was it again? Uh, right there, Jason Bushy. There you are, there you are, okay. Now, this is, this is, it's a great, it's another tell. So 62% of people, before they decide that they want to talk to you, according to LinkedIn's 2018 Sales Navigator Report, will look at your profile. And what we're showing them is language that has nothing at all to do with how you can help them do something better. 
as opposed to, for instance, if you were to go to, I don't know, my profile, for instance, or a bunch of people that I work with, just, just by way of example, mm -hmm. you'll see that although I'm a sales consultant, oh my God, look at that, there's another Josh Brown. How cool is that? <laughs> I never saw that guy before. Oh my God, where am I? <laughs> wow, I disappeared from LinkedIn search. Oh, here I am. Um, not booking enough meetings with qualified buyers, getting ghosted after your, after your first meetings, read this profile. So this is, this is speaking to the problems that I help people with. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to drive this point home, this is a website called Schultz Photo School. These guys sell tutorials to help parents take better pictures of their kids. How do they make people mm -hmm. happier? We help parents take better pics. What are the problems that I solve? Have you ever tried to learn how to take photos, but you've had to suffer through long tutorials in geek language? That is how their prospects speak. Um, so step one in this process to be able to get closer is not to think of the keys and not to invent the keys, but to actually talk to customers using something called jobs to be done, which is a very specific interview technique that allows you to understand the customer's journey leading to purchase. It's the only technique I know that does it. You can't ask people why they bought, they won't be able to tell you. Hey, John, why'd you buy PX90? I wanted to lose weight. When you do a jobs to be done interview, you hear things like this. I wanted my thighs not to rub together because I was going to my high school reunion and I wanted to like hook up. <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Sure. It's, it's jobs to be done interview technique we used over at Base Camp and at Jelly Vision, my former company, and it was really instrumental in getting that language so that we could then use it in our cold outreach and our marketing materials. So if you're making it up and you're asking people internally that have never done the job, jobs to be done or shadowing. Literally going to your customers and watching them work for a while and listening to their lingo, start a Google Doc and just start writing down the language of the mm -hmm. customer. Right? By way of example, one more just because I know people like examples. Um, sure. here's, another, here's another example. Um, just to drive this home. So this is a, a, a thing that I sell called Gotta share screen again. Oh, sorry. That asked me to be <laughs> sorry. Let me show you this. So let me actually show you a couple things. So this is oh, actually, actually I have to share audio here. Hold on a second. Let me do this. Share audio. Okay. So I'm going to go back to LinkedIn. I'm going to show you a couple things. So I'm working on a new course called. I saw that. Yeah. So so watch. So watch the. What, look at the land. So look. You saw that post. Mm hmm. So if you saw that post, so I talk to people like you all the time, right? And so if you listen to this guy, if you watch the video, this is this is what he said. Mm hmm. We're moving from inbound to outbound, and we're getting our teeth smashed in. Yeah, I saw that this morning. I could never, ever invent that, nor would mm -hmm. I want to. So your customers will give you that language. And then on the landing page, you just actually use that language. Getting your teeth mm -hmm. smashed in, moving from inbound to outbound. Want to write cold emails, but you're not a copywriter. These are, this is, these are words that I got. This is why if you look at my website, you'll see all the response rates that I get because that's how people talk. They don't mm -hmm. talk probably like this. Mm -hmm. And when I see stuff like this, the reason I'm, I'm picking on it is because yep. your cold emails probably sound like that too. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And I can't give you the language. What I do is my, so my process is I interview customers and then yep. I have a formula and a process that's going to be the course I'm creating. We could talk about that but for how you take that and then you convert that into here. I'll share my screen again. So I like to show stuff. So I'm not talking about stuff. So this is a sure. product that I'm working with. Um, we're using a product called um, Outreach, which is a product that sequences emails. Sure. But we then take that, we take that language and mm -hmm. we actually turn it into cold email sequences. Sure. So these are the sequences that we follow, but they're, they're all, all the language that we have is, is created based on those interviews. And then I marry them up with different uh, templates and ways in which I, explain that information in a way that gets people to care and ultimately motivates them to say, let me hear more. Right. Thoughts yeah. on how you can might, 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 might uh, action that, I guess.
that's for your business. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it makes sense. So it's interesting. It depends on who you talk to for what you get, right? So um, you've got your your experience and your results of what works well for you. And I hear from different sales professionals, different, you know, opinions. Um, what I've been hearing uh, most recently the last couple of years is is trigger points, right? So you want to connect with people. So you want to connect with them. And I've always struggled with a trigger point. And I'm going back to this because let's say that um, you see that their, their HR is hiring and they're looking for more salespeople. So that could be a great trigger point. So for us, because we help drive sales leads, right? Have companies help drive sales leads. We could call them up and say, you know, hey, are you looking to fill seats or are you guys swimming in sales leads, right? And have a conversation. And that's a trigger point. And that's to open up, you know, hey, I see you've got this job opening for a sales position and you know you start ha opening and having the conversation to find out why it is that they're hiring someone to see then how you can transit and i've always been it's like a little awkward like how do you start talking about one thing and how do you naturally transition to this is what we do and how i really want to help you guys because i believe in what we do wholeheartedly and i you know i see the results and it's awesome um our customers love us but you know, how do you convey that to, right? I mean, that's the art of sales. Well, like, that's, the, that's the art of actually writing sales copy, not really sales. So you don't have to be a copywriter and you don't have to be a writer. But I can teach you how to write a sales email. Um, but I, I disagree with, so the, this, this whole trigger thing is interesting, right? Yep. But to me, to me that it's, we can call it whatever you want. But sure. When anyone comes to work every day, mm -hmm. you want to get a job done. Right. Every day. You, me, Agreed. everybody. That, that's a timeless. I'm always trying to get a job done. And sometimes the job that I'm getting done, I'm getting it done just fine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't know what's possible. Right? So I'm getting the job done. And if you ask me if I have a problem, I don't. I'm recruiting people just fine. But what I might not know and might, what I might not be aware of is something that you could educate me on by, mm -hmm. by way of example. And if you've seen this example on my feed, you know, stop me. But I, I went into a running store recently while I was waiting for my wife to shop in the mall. And if the sales rep asked me, hey, do you have a problem? No. What brings you in today? Nothing. I'm just browsing. But mm -hmm. she didn't do any of that. She said, hey, I noticed you got these running sneakers on. Do you run marathons? Yeah, sure, I do. She goes, have you ever had your running gait checked? What do you mean? Two minutes right. later, I'm on the treadmill. And she says, you have pronated feet those sneakers are bad. They can hurt you yourself on a long race. And then three minutes later, I'm spending $180 on sneakers. Exactly. I she shined a light. So the job that I had to get done was running a marathon. It's not a trigger point, really. It's a job. Maybe the job is I'm hiring people. The jobs don't change. How you get the job done always changes. Right? So we have to get close to the jobs people are trying to get done specifically within organizations. And just because you find a trigger point doesn't necessarily mean that there's energy around that in terms of why they bought your product. It might be, but I don't like to guess. So right. I have to the people that bought within the last 35 days, and let's hear exactly what they're saying. Hey, mm -hmm. John, you bought 30 days ago. Nobody wakes up one day and just decides to buy our product. When was the first time you thought that you needed a new mattress? Well, that was four months ago. What was going, so everything was fine, and then four months ago, what was going on over there? And what you'll find is a series of events happening over the course of time that eventually cause someone to fire their old mattress and hire the new mattress. Sure. And those struggles, those are the things that you've got to get. You're also going to hear, you know, I live with this mattress for a while because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to take the new mattress back. It wasn't if I didn't like it. All those anxieties have to go in the marketing copy because people don't just buy for the benefits. They're holding on to that anxiety and the fear. I don't want to get a new laptop, even though mine takes four minutes to, to boot up because I'm terrified that I won't be able to move the files over. And will I be able to work that new freaking touch bar thing that they have on this? There's anxiety of the habit. So we have to get those stories. And that is part of our marketing message too. If you find a trigger event online that they're hiring, okay, maybe that's right. Something. But maybe not. So it's not, so it's not about a trigger event. To me, it's like, what am I doing to get my job done? And how can I help people be a better version of themselves tomorrow? You upgrade your prospects, not your software. Yep. And people always want to get, people always want to improve tomorrow. Yep. We have to get closer to the job. 
So I would start, my, rec my, high, my recommendation is to start with interviewing people that bought within the last 35 days. Only need to interview four or five of them. You'll start to hear things repeat. And you're going to hear some things that are just different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going yeah, to good... you're gonna hear the story. Yeah, that's a good perspective. That's a really good perspective. I guess, um, you know, I've been so focused on the business aspect of what, what the desire is for these companies. These companies want to grow. They want to profit. Everybody wants to make money, right? But think, about what you just, think about what you just said there. So generic. It is. It's just so generic. Save time. Grow my, it's, just, it's not how I describe my job. Yeah. So, so as an SDR, I just worked with a client up the street from mine. Yep. SDR specifically, these guys were sending emails out manually. Then they were creating a task to follow up. They were naming a task, task two. Then they would go into the sent folder, find the old email, forward it, and attach the new email as a re. It was a manual process. I understood that problem crispy. And so I was mm -hmm. able to come in and say things like, are you manually going into Outlook sent folder and sending emails and creating a task in your Sierra? That's very different than saying we save you time and money. One is like, holy shit, that's my job. How do I, I, I don't have to do that anymore? Like, show me that nirvana. <laughs> so when I hear people saying save time and money, and when I hear like, stuff on your website, to me it's a strong signal that I'm not close enough to the problem. And Got the, it. The job. Yeah, I hear that. That's, that's, that's uh, like a little light bulb going off there. It's kind of like thinking about sometimes when you're talking about something in a specific email and you refer to it as that, well, what is that? Say what it is, right? It's the same, same, yeah, yeah, okay. Just a different perspective. And these are things, this is how we learn and we grow, right? Is we, we connect, you know, and, 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 and we learn. So this is all valid. This is all good stuff. Yeah. Can I get a copy of this recording, by the way, as well? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would love that. I'm going to send it to you. And then, you know, so, so that's, that's step one. Yeah. Step one is the, is the kind of customer interviews. There's lots of different ways to do the research, too. You could also depending on what kind of product you have, mm -hmm. uh, you can look at how people are commenting on things. So G2 Crowd, for instance. Sure. Website where you can actually see, I don't, and it depends on your, on your product, but another way to do, get closer is, what are people saying that they like, what they don't like? Um, I, I often use, you know, I like, I like comment. I like when people are commenting on things. Yes. Um, so it's a third way to kind of do research. Another way is to start to listen to what they're listening to. Are they listening to certain podcasts? Are they reading certain books? Are they going to certain conferences? What are people talking about? Another approach that I've used is top challenges of X to start to read about how, and I look for quotes, but mm -hmm. nothing is better than people that bought your product because they had such a struggle that they fired something, risked their job and hired something new. Those right. people are the ones you want to talk to because those are the people you want to attract. That, that supersedes everything. That supersedes, trigger, it supersedes everything because it's the journey of your customer. Mm -hmm. and, there, and, it, and it stands to reason, to your point, that other people are struggling just like they did that don't even know you exist. Right. And right. if you can I match mean, their language, oh my God, you're sending manual email. I mean, I thought that's just the way things were done. Well, no, you could automate that. What do you mean? Well, here's what outreach does. It automates it so that you don't have to do that. So you have more time. You need less people. You can be on the phones more, book more meetings. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I've spent 30% of my day just sending emails. Yeah, that goes completely away. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. There's a gap between where I am and where I could be, and I don't, I'm not even aware of it most of the time. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't ask people what their problems are. They don't have any. We're booking meetings. Right. We have 19 people when we only need six, but that's just the way we've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is basically pay attention to those who are engaged, listen to what they're saying, and that's how you're going to infiltrate, if that's an appropriate word. Not people words. that are engaged, people that bought. So there's a big difference between everybody else is opinion and people that paid money to get you. Right. Those are the people's opinions that matter the most from my perspective. Because got it, got it. They, they, actually, they actually had some struggle that was high because most of the time you live with problems. Like my laptop takes three minutes to boot up. I'm not buying a new one. I'll sit through a demo, but I'm not right. buying a new one until my hard drive starts making a weird noise and I got a keynote presentation. Then all of a sudden I'm a buyer. Right. It's not just the problem. It's, the, it's what I call I'm a struggleometer. 
we got to be like in the red zone before we want to, because change is hard. I got to right. spend money. Does this thing going to work? I, I know how to use this system that I already have. Like, am I going to get fired if it doesn't work? Like, it's, it's got to be, you know, from your, you probably live with problems too. Maybe your TV isn't perfect. Whatever. You live with shit. Mm -hmm. So right. your customers eventually got to a point where they were like, I've had enough. <laughs> I, want right. to know why, I want to know why specifically. What are all those things that happen that eventually caused me to go out and buy a $4,000 mattress? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And I, I just feel like this is such a complex space. A lot of what, what we offer, a lot of people are not familiar with it. So it's all about education. It's all about ask, asking questions, getting them engaged. And, you know, how are you, you know, and, and getting them to self-identify and discover that what we're offering really does make sense. Yeah, well, let's actually go through an exercise. Let's actually give you a little quiz here. I call this the what do you do quiz. Sounds good. So you and I are at a networking event. Sure. Got those fancy name badges on. Jason, sure. what do you do, man? Well, we work with, uh, com we help companies attract the right visitors to their website so they get qualified sales leads. That's what I do. Okay, let's, uh, let's stop. <laughs> so what I say, that's interesting. Right out of the gate. So let's, let's, I'm going to teach you something new today. Yeah. So your solution, which you just said, yeah, your benefits has no value. Okay. I have a problem that you can help me solve. I want you to really let that sink in. Let me give you an example. You could have a product called unshrink it that unshrinks wool sweaters that you accidentally put in the dryer. So I saved 300 bucks, I cashmere sweater, accidentally put it in a dryer, pour this liquid on it. And if you walked up to me in a networking event, I said, well, we, take, we, we take your sweaters, we unshrink, we get this liquid. It's got a 24 ounce bottle, we spray it on there. And meanwhile, I don't own any wool sweaters. So I don't care. So we have to start our response to that question by asking if they've struggled with something that we help with. So for unshrink it, I would say, hey, Josh, do you have any wool sweaters? Yeah, I do. Have you ever taken a wool sweater and have you ever accidentally put it in the dryer by accident and it totally shrunk and you couldn't wear it again? Yeah, that has happened to me. So let's translate that to your business. And you All might, right, so may or may not know the answer to this. I want you to talk about a specific problem that you think I might have that you can potentially address. So, hey, Jason, what do you do? And I want you to start with, hey, Josh, have you ever? Yeah. So, hey, Josh, do you have a website? I do. Have you ever uh, felt like you put a lot of time and money into it and just don't get the results that you expect? What do you mean results? Well, what, what's the, why did you build a website? So we built a website primarily for marketing purposes so that when people come to it, we can hopefully get some leads. Yeah. So are you getting the leads that you're looking for? Yeah, we get leads. Well, are you getting the leads that you're looking for? Yeah, the leads we have are, are good. Oh, that's great. So are you happy with how many leads that you're getting? Do you have a bunch of salespeople that are working for you? Yeah, we have a bunch of salespeople and we, we're doing pretty well with leads. So I should send you a life vest because you're swimming in leads. Yeah, we're doing okay. <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, I don't know how it's, I mean. Well, that's end of role play. Yeah, because well, I'm well, floundering well, over here. That's, that's, that's okay. Let's flip it around. Yeah. So I'll be you. Okay. Uh, do, you have a, do you have a website? Yeah, I have a website. Uh, typically when I speak to people with you, they're using their website to attract leads. I'm assuming you guys are as well? Yes. On average, how many inbound leads are you guys getting? Like 10, 20, 30? Uh, we're getting like 30 a, 30 a month. Hmm. I hear that all the time. Would you be interested in hearing about how you can get 50 more qualified um, leads per month? That's something that would be interesting to you to hear more about? Yeah, potentially. What's that cost? Yeah. Yeah. So, so see what I did there? Because happy is relative. I walk in, are you happy with your meetings? This company up the street, yeah, we're, we're thrilled. Everything's going fine. We're booking 10 meetings, got 19 people. Would you be interested in an idea to help you book twice as many meetings with half the amount of people? What do you mean? Do you want to get your gate checked? What is that? So you have to identify the gap. Yes. Bingo. You have to shine a light on something, right? And so until you shine the light on it, there's no need to talk about your solution. The life vest line was 
I thought was kind of funny for what it's worth. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I, just, but again, I wouldn't say that. I want you to have the mindset of this. And a lot of people do this. They ask questions. That you say you're floundering. I hear that all the time. In fact, it's yeah. in my marketing copy. Are you floundering on initial call? Like, this is where I get the language, right? You can see you just, sure. you just gave it to me. I right, wanted to write right. a course on how to do this. Are you floundering? You know, so people are asking questions, and they're not exactly sure. They just keep asking them, and they don't know why. I want you to think of an infomercial every time. Mm -hmm. Infomercials always start with the problem. Are you in the kitchen trying to make the perfect French fry with a knife? Kitchen's a mess. French fries are soggy. Family's unhappy. Introducing the potato peeler 3000. Are you, trying, are you 68 years old and you're trying to get out of your car by yourself? You have to push off like this. Your knees hurt. You need someone to pull you out of the car. Introducing the car cane. Now you can get out of the thing independently. So we have to find out when we're asking people this initial question is, is there a gap that we can help people with? And so in your case, mm. probably every website, remember, they're getting the job done before they met you. They have a website and mm -hmm. they're getting leads and they may think that's just fine. Mm -hmm. So you say, are you getting leads? Yeah, like you did. How many, are, are you happy? Yeah, sounds good. Are you swimming? Then you didn't know where to go. Well, how many are you getting? They're getting 20, getting 30. Well, yeah, we're getting 30. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I hear that all the time. Um, would you be interested in how companies like you went from getting 30 to 50, mm. while also increasing the quality in terms of leads that would close? Uh, using a lesser known approach that you might not be on radio. Is that something that would be interesting to you? Mm -hmm. Or what do you mean? Well, let me ask you a couple more questions. <laughs> and then yeah. we kind of dig a little bit deeper. And then, and only then, once we've listened, do we explain. And when we explain, we explain it in the context of what we just heard using their language. You just Brilliant. Told. Brilliant. So, it's what's called, so it's what's called relevant. So this is going to be, this is part of my course that I'm actually releasing soon called mm -hmm. how to explain what you do in a mm -hmm. way that gets people to care and actually are motivated to learn more, which is ultimately the purpose of explaining what you do mm -hmm. at a networking event or wherever you are. But this, again, this approach can be used on an initial call as well. Mm -hmm. Because if there mm -hmm. is no gap, your benefit statement, your value prop, your 30 second elevator pitch, which I hate, means nothing because I don't have a wool sweater that's shrunk. I don't care. And half the time I can't understand the 30 second pitches anyway, because they use things like end to end platform or stuff that's on your, or what did you guys right. say on your website? The jargon, the jargon. High performance, the jargon. A high performance B2B marketing platform. I'm like, you lost me, dude. You're, you're the Ferris Bueller teacher in Ferris Bueller's day off. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And it's full of jargon. It's all the way down through there. Yeah. And yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm, and I feel like, do you feel that there's a difference between selling a B2C product or a B2B product, a B2B product? Do you think that there's any difference in marketing? It's not B2B, it's not B2C, it's, it's H to H. Human to human? It's yeah. a person buying something. Now, yeah, and, I've always, and I've always said B2P, business to person. It's, it's a person buying something. Now, obviously, right. cheaper right. products happen faster. They're transactional. Right. You're like, so I, I shouldn't say it's this, exactly the same. It's not really true. If I'm buying something expensive, I don't wake up one day and buy it. Mm -hmm. There's a chain of events that have happened over the course of many months that caused me to buy, you can't see it from here, but that, that, that $8,000 bike that you, that you can't really see. Well, you mm -hmm. can't really see it. But there's, there's a chain of events that caused me to buy that. Whereas, you know, uh, something that's a couple hundred bucks, it's an impulse purchase. I might just buy it. So if we're right. talking in the, in the world of things that cost a lot of money, over five grand, there's always, whether it's a, a consumer product, like a television mm -hmm. or a sofa, or like our, our, our Tempur-Pedic mattress, great store. That's an $8,000 purchase. That did not happen like sporadically. There was a whole chain of events that happened that eventually caused me to buy that stupid thing. Sure. And it's the same thing with your, your product. Is called, how much, what's the ACV on your product, the annual contract value? Five grand, 10 grand? 30 grand, 60 grand. It's, it's not yeah. an impulse purchase. No, it is not. No, no. And it's a team of people. It's not a single decision maker. Now we've got the influencers, right? Which is a Every different sale. messaging, different Every language, sale. all the Every way up through. Every sale. Yep. And so what we yep. have to understand when we're doing outbound is this. This is another, going to be a really good takeaway for you. Yeah. Is I learned this from Chet Holmes, which was about 10 years ago, and I've been using it ever since to tell stories. So I do workshops. There's about 300 people in the room. And I say, raise your hand if you are buying a computer this week. 
and like, I don't know, four hands go up. Raise your hand if you're going to buy a computer eventually. Every hand goes up. Sure. That's outbound. Outbound are the four people. Most people when we're going outbound aren't actively shopping. And yet we treat them like they're at the end of the buying cycle by giving them demos. Right. Huge disconnect. Right. And on this flip side of that, if someone's coming in red hot and we're asking them about their priorities and we're treating them like they're at the beginning of the sales cycle, we're pissing them off. Like when right. I go to Apple and my hard drive's buzzing, the last thing I want to hear is, let me tell you about our laptops. No, dude, I got one question. How do I move the fucking files off my laptop onto this new one so I can get the fuck out of here? Right. Your customers, right. Have that. Your customers, if they're at the end of the right. back journey, so I ask people. It's one of the first questions that like people are like, well, how do you know? Well, I just asked someone on a discovery call. Hey, John, how long have you been looking for something like this? Month, two months, how long? What, what have you been trying? I'm seeing where are they on the timeline so I know how to treat them. We've been looking right. for four months, Josh. We've tried five sales trainers. We tried, what do you need to know? Yep. I need yep. to know A, B, and C. Okay. Yep. So, I agree with you 100%. 100%. Bingo. So, true story. I walked in, I was going to a sales appointment. I accidentally rocked into the wrong office, right? And I'm like, oh man, I'm in the wrong place. Okay, you know, there's am human, right? And so I run into the CEO of this company. And so he's like, well, what do you do? And so we just started chatting a little bit. And he said, here's my card, let's stay in touch, sounds good. So 16 months later, they're now a major client. Why? Because I stayed with him and just helped him over time with relevant information thought this would be helpful from this conversation, thought this would be helpful, but I'm not trying to piss him off and get him like he's at the end of this buyer cycle. That's one thing that I feel like that I'm good at and respectful of people is where they are in the cycle. It's just identifying where they are. Hey, if now's not a good time, Josh, let's touch, let's touch base in three months. Does that sound reasonable? Or well, I, would actually, I would actually do something a little different there. So you're on the right track, but let me give you something yeah. else that's gonna be even more powerful. So you wanna stay top of mind when people aren't ready to switch yet, which is a lot of times in outbound. Sure. Oftentimes we don't know what to do with salespeople because we want to close the deal now and get right. paid. And so we're like, we'll follow up in three months. Well, in the meantime, something could be happening and then I'm shopping and I'm not thinking of you. So what do we do? So the barbecue guys, that grill I, I bought, when I first contacted them, I wasn't really ready to buy the grill because I was getting by. I was just cooking for my wife and I, even though one side didn't work. But what the guy said to me was pretty interesting. He said, hey, Josh, from time to time, about once a month, we send videos that teach you how to become a master griller, and they're funny as hell, how to make steaks, fish. You want us to send those to you? Sure. So every month, I didn't get some boring marketing newsletter or some stupid article someone forwarded me. I got like this video from the barbecue guys that was funny, entertaining. It made me feel something. Like I like these guys, which right. is what every communication should, because it's a feeling. So when I was ready to buy a grill, I, honestly, dude, I didn't even look at, and I didn't even go to Google, I just did barbecue guys. Because they not only taught me how to be a better griller, but they did it in a way that was entertaining. And that caused me to actually like them, their mm -hmm. personality. You have that same opportunity. So with mm -hmm. your CEO, hey, from time to time, I shoot out videos about X, Y, and Z that helps you do learn this, get smarter. And then it's actually your video, and you put that on your feed too. Like, this is how you and I are talking. Like right. you saw my stuff. This is exact. So you saw the stuff. They see it. And then when they're ready, we're having a conversation. And you're top of mind. Right. Right. So Brilliant. Like, and then you take, those, you take those same videos and you put them in a nurture track. And you just drag people in there. So my, the stuff that you see on my feed is in my outreach nurture track. Mm -hmm. When I find out that someone's not in the red zone, which is sometimes... And I can find out in about seven minutes. I get out. I don't waste my time. They go into the, they hear, they see my videos. They, my wife teaches my wife sales, whatever the thing is. And then when they're ready, hey, Josh, let's talk. And now usually when they come back, like your CEO, they're in the red zone. Where we get into trouble is where we try to close people right. that aren't ready. They're, they're doing okay, man. With the right. grip. The pain isn't big enough yet. It will be one day, but don't, right. but don't push. <laughs> Agreed. I, I, I can't agree more that's nail on the head absolutely yeah. yep so i mean so that's good so it's just opening the doors i think so my thought is is you know like in the sales you fill your funnel right so what i need to do is i just need to be able to 
naturally reach out to these people in a meaningful way so that I can basically make that connection. Because the very first premise of marketing is getting a company and a potential buyer to know each other and what they do. That's the, very, that's the introduction. That's the very first thing that needs to happen. Otherwise, you're never going to have an opportunity to sell that person or that well, person. Nobody, nobody, wants, nobody cares what you do, buddy. Honestly, I don't care what you do. I, I have a problem that I might if be, I, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be more awesome. Okay. I don't care about your company as a person and you're the same way. Yeah. I want to kick more ass at my job. Sure. I don't care what you do. You sure. need to resonate with me like Josh. So if you were to cold call me, Josh, I noticed that you have a podcast called Inside Selling. Listen to a couple episodes, really like the one that you did with Rick. But I noticed you didn't have any sponsors, and I work specifically with salespeople with, like you that have podcasts helping them get sponsors, which typically generate about $1,000 a month. Are you aware of services like that? Nope. Sure would be interested in that. Notice, didn't say anything about what he did. Talked about me and my situation and how I might be able to be happier. Not his B2B podcasting, whatever the thing is that he sells. He sold the problem first and the what's possible first. That's what people care about. Mm. Not what you do. It's different. What do you do is different than how can I help? What, how do you help me kick more ass? It's different. Man, this is hard. This is hard yeah, digging it's, into it. It's, 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 not mindset. Hard if, it's not hard if you talk to customers because you're coming at this from a seller's mindset. Right. You got to get out, out of that. And you're right. You got to get into the buyer's mindset because I can tell, tell from the website. And I can sure. tell your profile, like it, it oozes seller, 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 seller. So just start mm -hmm. talking to customers, man. It'll all fall into place. Trust by, me. The, by the way, my profile on LinkedIn, I worked really hard on only because I went to a, I went to a, uh, a LinkedIn profile uh, seminar workshop on how to build a kick-ass LinkedIn profile. Well, what's the purpose and, of your profile? What do you think the purpose of it is? Uh, I want people to know what I do and I want them to like me. <laughs> people, don't care, people, people don't care what you do. Okay. What's the purpose of your website? It's not for people to care what, the purpose of your website no. is for you to start a conversation with someone. Drive leads. That's right. right. So if, Drive that, leads. That's the, if that's the purpose of your profile, why are you talking that you're a, what, what are you saying you are? A top 30, whatever? Entrepreneur. Well, I don't care that you're an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm, I'm being a little hard on you, but honestly, I don't yeah, care. That's good. Yeah, okay. I really don't right. care that you're an entrepreneur, man. I think it's great right. good for you, but that's not going to help me kick more ass. If the purpose of your website, which you have a website, it's your LinkedIn profile. If your purpose right. of that is to start conversations with people, then why are you talking like you're marketing yourself and looking for a sales job? Aha. Uh -huh. Good question. My, so my I, should should asking, I should be asking questions. Well, let's look at a couple of people I work with. So let me just, so you saw yeah, that. Let's do that. Here's, here's a couple other ones, right? So. I mean, here's, here's, you know, I'll just pump up a couple of these. So this is, this is a person that used to say I'm a CEO. Are you seeing my screen? Yep. So she could say I'm a CEO. She is a CEO, but she's helping recruitment teams get more talent. So if I hit, well, what does that mean? And I go, I go down to here. I can actually see I help talent. Look at buyer focused. Tell their company stories using video to attract and retain talent. Mm -hmm. She's not a CEO or an entrepreneur, right? So here's another one. Let's see how this person is describing her problem. Do you find yourself staring at your computer not knowing how to start a writing project? Yes. When you finally get started, does it feel like struggling? Yes. Are you left wondering if you use the right words in the right context? Yes. This person prospected me. I went to her LinkedIn profile. I read that I get 15 to 20 connection requests a week. She mm -hmm. broke through. I looked at her profile. I could share with you her message too, which was brilliant. And I hired her and she's still working for me. If her profile said, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm done with her. Because it sure. has too much work. Got it. So when Got you went to that LinkedIn profile workshop, it starts with what's the goal? If the goal is for you to get another job, great. You're an entrepreneur and you've accomplished all these things. If the goal is for you to use your website as a way to start conversations with prospects and drive business, don't talk about you being an entrepreneur because again, that's stat from LinkedIn and it's certainly true. 62% of people look at your profile 
before they decide if they want to talk to you. So if you look at my profile, what she said to do was um, tell your story. Tell your story of who you are and what you do. I don't care, dude. Love it. I want my yeah. story. I want my story. I, unless the purpose of your website is to tell your story, which is fine if that's your purpose. If the purpose is to drive a conversation, I don't really care about your story, man. I'm, I'm being a little harsh on you, but I- No, 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 that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I yeah. care about my podcast. I care about growing my business. I yeah. care about reducing my acquisition costs. I care about yes. reducing my risk about something that- Josh, are you aware? This is Nelly. Josh, were you aware on page seven of your Badass B2B Growth Guide that you have five typos? And if you have five typos, which was true, people get yeah. that, they might talk badly about your great product, but it's riddled with typos. You get a bad reputation. Nelly, no, I wasn't aware of that. Josh, I actually fixed them for you on page seven. You've got some other ones. Would you like me to take a look? Nelly, you're hired. Right. I, didn't hear, I don't know Nelly's story. I have no fucking idea if she likes karate. I don't know. Right. She got it done. Pain point. She Maybe got it happier. done. Mm -hmm. So that's whoever taught you that. I would, get, I would ask that person, what's the goal? And if, the goal, if her goal was, well, it's just something for you and for your branding and to make you get more jobs, then whatever, dude. But if, sure. the, goal is what, if the goal is what it is for me, which is I want to start more conversations, then you got to make it about the other people, not you. Got it. So let me ask you this, professional development so that I can continue to grow. You're right? doing I mean, it, I, I You're get doing it. Well, I get, well, this is why we're doing this. And I get it. I mean, obviously, you offer all these other, right? workshops and things. The uh, B2B, badass B2B growth guide that I bought into, which I haven't started yet. I've just been slammed with time. Um, what other, other assets or trade journals or? Dude, you are, you are, you are ahead of 99% of people. Dude, you're learn by the, because we're on this call. Yeah. You're ahead. You Thank are, you. You'll find that if you reach out to anybody, mm -hmm. they'll have this conversation with you. Mm-hmm. I think it's the best way to learn. You find someone that you like and you talk to them, read their stuff. There's no shortage. There's no one book. Just keep right. reading stuff. That, uh, uh, there's, if there was one method, see, this is how I look at sales. You, sure. have, a jelly, this, you have a jelly bean jar and you right. take something from me, you put it in there. Something from this person, you put it in there. And then exactly. you, have own, you have your own jar, dude. It's like religion. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I've got my own style. You've got your style. I got my own style. I'm going to learn a few things from you and learn from each. I agree. I, we have, we're on the same page. Keep doing and, it, man. And I think I found you through Sales Hacker. I think you wrote an article through Sales Hacker or yeah, something. Yeah. And yeah. So like there's one that you know, comes in my feed and I try to, and we haven't really even um, turned things on yet, really. I mean, we've got a website that says all this stuff that we developed a couple of years ago. It's old. We need to revamp that. Um, we're on the verge of, of, of launching a new product, actually, which is kind of interesting. You're on so, the verge of solving a new problem, not launching yeah. a new product. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to beat into your head, dude, so that you're starting to think like. I like that. I like that. We'll come to Vermont and uh, we'll beat some beers into your head. So. <laughs> I, would, I would love that, man. Would, yeah, so just, you know, I love the uh, Salesman podcast. Yeah. Uh, this guy, Will Barron. I love that, that guy's podcast. My podcast is okay too, Inside Selling, but the Salesman podcast is way better. He's just better than I am. Um, okay. He's got a great, I think it's the most popular sales podcast on the planet Earth in terms of downloads. He's a great host. The guy's name is Will Barron. I've been on there a couple times, but he's a great, like if you go to Salesman, I think it's called Salesman Podcast. Okay. Um, listen to a bunch of episodes. Um, I also like the Advanced Selling Podcast with Bill Kasky. Okay. Um, and then I also like the No BS Sales Podcast. I think that one's pretty nice, pretty good too. So what I take away is here, action items. I need to go interview some clients. Yeah, man. Which I can I do know, easy read enough. Up on the, read up on the jobs to be done interview technique. Jobs to be done. Yeah. Where do I find that? Uh, Google. Just, just Google? It's also, yeah. the, it's also in the Badass B2B Growth Guide. Isn't that funny? I actually ask that question these days. Where do I find that? Like, hello. <laughs> All right. So I, have a, I have a couple plays on that in the Badass B2B Growth Guide you'll find as well that you, that you bought. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. And then I, have a, I have a course coming up. I think it's going to be, uh, from the research that I'm doing, quite helpful. Um, people are trying to create these sequences or cadences of emails. They get a yes. outreach and they don't exactly know how to write because they're not like copywriters. 
right? The name of this course is how to create high converting sequences. I saw that today. And it takes you through the whole thing. Um, I can add you to that list when it launches, but it is going to be, um, I'm working on it now and it's going to be sold through outreach. It's going to be a really dynamite course. It's going to take you through little jobs to be done stuff and how I think about marketing copy, lots of examples. So that might be something um, if you drop your, you know, yeah. interest in there, I'll add to that list. That might be something maybe that you're interested in as well. Sure. Sure. Cause I use the HubSpot CRM. We use HubSpot of course. So they got the sequence, the sequence tools are there. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of good value. It's a, I, I'm sold on the product. I think HubSpot really is a really good. Yeah. They're all great. It's just, how do you, what do I put in it? Exactly. That's, that's the thing. It's like all these products do the same thing, but the, the thing that I see people struggling with and they'll say things like, I, I don't know what, I'm not a copywriter. Like I don't know what to write. Right. I'm taking templates off the internet, but like my response rates suck. I'm like, yeah, right. they're using the same templates everyone else is using. <laughs> right. Well, I think they need to go to use the language that their customers are using. That's the first thing. It's natural, right? So. Use the lingo, buddy. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Two books this for you that are, that are great. Um, I'm sorry? I'll, I'll recommend two books for you if you want. Yeah, I love them. Love There's a good read. I'm going to make sure I give you the right name of it. Uh, I think it's called Lingo. Uh, lingo. Sales. Let me see. Yeah, it's called Lingo, Discover Your Ideal by Jeremy Shaw. Yep. Jeffrey Shaw, Jeff, Jeffrey Shaw. Discover your ideal customer's secret language and make your business irresistible. Lingo by Jeffrey Shaw. Mm -hmm. That might be a nice read for you. Yep. That uh, comment that we were talking about. What's another book? You said there's another one? Yeah. Second one that I really like is a book called Sales Differentiation by Lee Saltz, S-A-L-Z. Oh my God, they're both five-star five rated on Amazon too. See, man, I got good taste in books. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I just read a quick read, uh, Exactly What to Say. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Oh yeah, I like that book. Yeah, it's not bad. It's one of those, you know, pick up and read again and again. I'm one of these guys, it's repetition. Like that's if okay. I can just, it's just repetition. When I go through it three, four, five, six times and I start to get honed in on it, you're smart, yeah. man. Most people I read a book it. once and I think you don't, you really get the most value when you go through things multiple times. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I feel like I'm the only guy in the world that struggles because I can't read it once and walk away. And, you know, I feel like I should know everything, you know, <laughs> I, you know? I got to read it a few times. So it's nice to hear everyone that. Tell you, everyone ever tell you you look like that guy from Saturday Night Live? No. Which one? I don't know his name, dude, but there's a guy on Saturday Night Live that looks just like you, man. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know the yeah. guy's name, but I should, you should Google yeah. it. Google the cast and you'll see him. So yeah, yeah. Dude, anytime you, know, you want to reach out again and talk anytime and get some of this stuff. If you have, I'm usually giving pretty on uh, messaging on LinkedIn. I'm pretty much always plugged in there. And, awesome. Um, and, and go get it, buddy. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you for your time. Recording. I'll send you the recording too. Yeah, awesome. Do that. That'll be awesome because I'm going to watch this thing three, four times. Do Sounds that. good. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Josh. You got it.